Hi everyone, we're continuing from the last video. We're going to do part three now. So I'm going to show this. Now there are two methods that I can think of. Method one is uh, pretty standard. All we're going to do is multi method is just multiply out this thing here and then one minus it and that will be the same answer that we showed in part two. So that's the method, it's a bit boring. Well we're told that EIs are independent, let's recap what that will mean for three variables. It means that the, pa the they are pairwise independent, take any two E I E J where I is not equal to J, so E1, E2, E1, E3, E2, E3. That breaks down to the product of the individual probabilities but also that's not enough for independence when you have three variables we must also have that like, all three of them are independent like this breaks down to like that okay so we need the both to hold now to show you the method I don't want to do n is for three variables let's just do it for two variables and compare it to this because because you know it's easy to show you the method that way so let's just suppose that we're dealing with two variables and what does this thing here mean well, the big pi here is the product. So this just means 1 minus probability of E1 times 1 minus probability of E2. So let's just let P1 denote probability of E1, that denote probability of E2, and multiply out. Then let's call this whole thing A. Then this right hand side is 1 minus A in my notation, right? So that's just that. 1 minus all that is that. And just come. And then note that P1 times P2 by independence is the same as probability of E1 and E2. And then the right hand side is equal to this. So for the two variable case we have then shown that this holds. Now for method 2, method 2 is more interesting. I'm always trying to bring you something interesting perhaps you haven't seen in college. Okay, for this we need to recall what the Bernoulli random variable is. So let's say x follows a Bernoulli distribution trial with parameter pi, pi for success, say. So Bernoulli takes two values, 1 and a 0. Probability of taking 1 is pi. Expected value of a Bernoulli is then just pi, being 1 times that plus that times that. That's the formula. All right? And then that's... Uh, so then, if we look at this carefully, and most students just stop then, just accept it as it is. So if we look at it more carefully, then it means like it's the expected value of this random variable is a probability of like success. It's the probability that the event has happened. Okay, so when we use um, the Bernoulli, we used to say that let x be equal to one if the um, a successful outcome occurs. Okay, so we're going to take that idea and uh, instead of calling it a Bernoulli random variable, the jargon we use is indicator variable. So let A denote union of the three events. Now I'm going to set up my indicator variable. God, I hate my pen today. It's really sticking and really. Okay, let A I I subscript A equal 1 if the outcome belongs to this event A and 0 otherwise. So AI will take the value 1 if your outcome is in A1, A2, A3 or A union A2. A okay, so you can think about a Venn diagram at A1, A2, A3 if it lies anywhere in here A1, A2, A3. Okay. Then observe the following then this indicator value being 1 or 0 will equal 1 minus that the event uh, of the indicator that the event is not in A. So if you have an outcome it's going to be in A or not in A. So if it's in A then this will be 0. Then that makes sense because then A this will be 1. On the other hand, if your outcome is in the set not A, then this will be 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. 
then this is zero, which makes sense. Now using De Morgan's law, how you how can we write this is just uh, just uh, a is that the complement of all that is De Morgan's law is this. And now for a fact, because I'm not going to prove it today, but it's easy to show. I uh, just want to make this simple as possible. If you take the expected value of an indicator variable of an event, let's call that event A, then that equals to the probability of A. So by using an indicator variable, taking expectation of an indicator variable gives us the probability of an A. So it's like a link between pro expectation and probability. And that's why I kind of rewrote this over here. That's the probability of success. Now we apply the expectation rules as usual. So we apply expectation on the left hand side, expectation on the right hand side. And this is the beauty of it, so it just falls out. It's just it's just basically just write whatever the subscript is. So then the probability expected value of this guy is probability of A. Expected value of one is one, minus the expected value of this is just we write all this, it's like that. But what is that? That can be simplified to the product of the individual probabilities because the because since the EI is independent, so are the complements. And we can prove that as well. But we'll take that as given. And this is just this, because you know one minus probability of an event happening is equal to the probability that the event doesn't happen. Right, so it's just I could just rewrite that if I wanted to. Right, so there's two methods there. Uh, this indicator variable is what I like. Mo I like this one. Uh, indicator variables are used uh, a lot more, like when you're doing mathematical statistics, more uh, more advanced statistics. Uh, even though you've actually seen it in a basic course in stats, because you know about the Bernoulli, but they don't actually go into indicator variables until advanced stats. Or you might have a different experience. Maybe your professor is teaching it in a lower course. If so, just let let me know. That would be interesting to know. Okay, guys, like, share, comment.